difference here between Shicho and Makashi, right? Because now we're transitioning into Shicho. Now Shicho, two-handed, right? Like we, were, like we were doing before, you know, like this, based a lot on military stuff, a lot of close, close combat fighting, melee fighting, you know, that kind of thing. Makashi focus primarily on one-to-one -one combat, dueling. Hence its connection to fencing, yada, yada, yada. Um, so <clears throat> the first thing of, um, kind of characteristic about it is, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, but <clears throat> we end up staying in attack stance for most of the time. Doesn't mean we don't get into the other stances, but most of the time we stand here and we have our saber out in front of us here. And our moon guards, uh, half moon, full moon, up like this, and then new moon, okay, are our basic guards. So we're, again, we're starting with three guards here. Our basic high guards are here. Now the difference with our guards here, right, is we keep the tip pointing forward, okay? So basically, as he goes up to carry this, he doesn't give up any space to me. You see? Whereas, if he was doing with Shicho, go ahead and put two hands on there. When I go up here like this, now I have a little bit more of a, of a chance to come in. And that's what you can probably see going two-handed against one-handed, that kind of thing. Okay, so the moon guards are basic things like that, right? Now, they're not just for parrying, they're for strikes, they're for all that kind of thing, right? <clears throat> Our spears are where we're going to rotate this. So starting on the corona, which is the tip, if we keep that steady and go through our moon guards, here is, yep, there you go. Right. It's, it's, it's even more, more difficult than most people think. And then it, look, then, then it looks. Now, the nice thing about that is, if we're here, now if you just go up, see, you can affect parries without disengaging, right? So if I'm here and I disengage, or let's say I'm, I'm here, then you just drop into, see, there. And then you can come up there. If I come down here, then again, right? We'll get into the, into, into the lower things here. But now the, the uh, chromosphere is the middle of the blade, right? So we're doing this stuff, okay? This is when we're in like this and we're doing this stuff, right? Right, exactly, okay? A lot of the, you know, like when we were doing the disarms the other day, that's, that's where the disarms come in, right? <clears throat> okay, chromosphere, okay. okay? Photosphere is where we do most of our striking, that's right here at the hilt, okay? So when I go here, that's, that's photosphere, you see, and that's basically what you get. Now, using just those, the combination of those three, you can pretty much cover your whole body. And if you think about your zones, right, this is where your zones are really going to come in handy because your zone two and five are most all the time forward, right? So your primary targets when you are fighting one-handed or you're doing makachi or whatever you want to call it, right, your primary targets, in, if, if they're doing it, are the head, weapon arm, and forward leg, and the same with you. That is also where you have to guard, okay? Now, <clears throat> keeping it straight forward, we then favor thrusts and taps, right? Now, we can't do much thrusting with these, <laughs> so, you know, yeah, to the mask like we were doing, that's fine, but, you know, we try to stay away from, from anything like that. But you can still get kits, right, doing these things. If I shift forward into a moon guard while I'm, as we say, in opposition or, or in contact with the blade here, right, I can 
affect those things. Now, if I just go over to the side, I can get a grazing strike on the shoulder, neck, mask, somewhere, right? So even though we're not thrusting towards the body a whole lot, it's still a very useful technique. It's also a very useful technique, I think, if you, if you guys are seeing, to, as we're here, is just to, to come in to push somebody's attack away, right, and to, to, and to, to make space. And so that's where we get, we're always on the center line, right, right here in the middle, so if I face the camera, like that, and then all of this happens here, and that's what you get, okay? So <clears throat> essentially at the first level of this, the student level, we're going to be focusing on just shim and shiak, and most of that's going to happen in one arm, right? <laughs> so shoulder health is very, very important, right? Practicing the guards, practicing all of that kind of stuff is going to be really, really important conditioning, you know, so that you can get it kind of moving in that way. Now, if I have my, my thing forward here, in order to strike you, I have to turn it, okay? So that's why we're doing shim much quicker. Sure, you can do these, right? However, you, you, you give up a lot, right? Because he can see it, and it starts a really solid rhythm that you could probably see me and John getting into at the end. Mm -hmm. Right? Where it's up, boom, 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 boom. And you, you, can, you can get into that for quite some time, right? So you always kind of want to, you know, take the initiative that way. But if I'm here, when I go to here, okay, you see, there's where this. So these types of Molinés or orbits as we call them, I mean, we're not going to call orbits here yet, right? They're more like turning parries, and we can do parries on that side too, so if I come over to this side, we go do, do the back one, that one. Right there, you see? So if he comes up over to this side, right, there's where a lot of those parries come in. Um, so that's, basic, that's the basic thing. We're not too worried about power, we're not too worried about big swings, or anything like that. What we're worried about is tight technique, good observation, and good mechanics and and uh, skill in in the movement and in the very very simple things, right? So when you get into the velocities, it starts very simple with a contentious opportunity, and then you move into you know other ones. Okay. Right. <clears throat> Footwork, of course. Very, very simple, right? There, you can uh, obviously doing, doing cross steps. If we're here, if he comes in to attack this side, I can parry, if I cross step at the same time, right? Now, as I step this way, look at how, how I kind of change my position here. If he goes that way, he's gonna run into it that way. If he backs up, I'm still in attacking range, right? However, you have, to, you have to know when you do it. They have to be committed forward, okay. right? Because otherwise, you're just, you're gonna hit air, right? Because it does take a while to take those two steps, right? Sure, it looks really quick when we're doing it here, right? Because it's all set up and it works perfect, right? So I can show you, right? Or if I go like this, yeah, okay, fine, right? We get the gear on and everything like that. That opportunity is not going to arise as much as you might think. And when it does, you've got, you really got to be quick because the other person is hyper aware as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So all of this is basically going into the premise that with Makashi, you don't have to worry about multiple opponents. You don't have to worry about weird terrain. You ha usually have a ring or some place that's, you know, set aside for what you're doing, right? It's one other person. They have, you know, the same weapon that you do, 
right? And that's what those dynamics are based on, right? So that it's basically lightsaber to lightsaber, not lightsaber to pike or lightsaber to this, that, or the other, but it's all kind of designed for lightsaber to lightsaber. The idea that there are two people standing here like this, and in order for me to hit him, I have to either get close enough to do so, do so by either reaching, something like that, to prevent him. If I just go down here, he's just gonna go for my head. Right? Okay, so I have to I have to know that. So if I go down and I can do that, right? Okay, fine. But again, it's gotta be quick, so it's and that's that's all you got. Okay? So Another way of thinking about it is you're trying to create a cone in front of you, okay, with your lightsaber, and you keep that cone pointed at your opponent, right? So that even if they start walking around you, right, you've got this, this kind of stuff. So these types of exercises here, where you're connected at the, at the, uh, at the blade there, can be very, very beneficial to this type of thing. Now, generally speaking, actually, I always say generally speaking, <laughs> here's the difference between doing a circle walk and that, because in, in I was, because I, I actually just messed it up. When I'm doing a circle walk, I'm always kind of walking forward, okay? It makes it look like I'm going to the side, but I'm not, okay? Cross-stepping here is this way. You see? My center never comes out of contact. Right? Okay. So if I go this way, I step across. If I go this way, I step behind. I can step across too, but see how I have to turn my body like that? That opens this here. So if he disengages and quickly comes over here, it's a very difficult thing to get and look at where I end up. Right? And now I'm, I'm stuck in here, which is not where I want to be. He basically took my cone and flattened it against me. You see? So, the further I want them out, the further I point, okay? Now, the further I point, the more vulnerable my hand is, right? And, Bokashi, as in the books and video games and everything like that, favors the sun gem, the hit the hilt, right? <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> right? It's the thing that's being held out for, to you, okay? And it has no card. Well, these don't. These don't. <laughs> we are missing our guards, <laughs> right? So, so that's the thing, you know. And the same thing here too. Like if we if we go walking in the circle, we can then just go around, like on the chrome. See, we can practice. You see, moving this, and notice when you're going around like this. This is where the the guards come in. You see, I always have some of my blade crossing my center line in him, right? So I'm never going to go out like this, because now this is open here in the, in the same way, right? So I'm sitting here, and I can, yeah, we can yeah, go, go that way. That's fine. You can go both ways, right? You see? And I'm trying to keep it right here. Now, it's not necessarily, you're not going to do that exercise and then hit the other person or anything like that. That's just a, you know, an exercise to help keep good contact and, and, and get some good uh, sensitivity going in your, in your hand and your shoulder, right? Because that's really what one-handed stuff is all about, okay? Is being able to sense, especially in moments like this, right? From the way my sword interacts with his, I should be able to start gaining information about what he's going to do, right, or what he can't do, right, and that's through here, okay. If he comes in here and we feel this, right, and he opposes me, okay, well that's going to tell me one thing. If he just receives my blows, that's going to tell me another thing, right. Each thing tells me a different thing, but again, it all depends on sensitivity and my ability to kind of read that and whatever. And then, once you get this game going, the single combat game, it, it, like you're saying, there's no tie. And it's, 
it's anybody's game, right? With weapons, that's the whole point of the weapon. It's to equalize things. It's to give people who couldn't defeat other people unarmed some defense, right? And then, of course, it is. All right. All right, make sense? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Can that make the highlight real? <laughs>